So I'm taking a mental health day. I'm actually having a bit of a mental breakdown. <sighs> but I'm quite good at having mental breakdowns. I've had worse ones than this. <sighs> so I sort of know how to sort of figure out what I need to calm down. And I sort of, well, I decided I needed to see the horizon. I needed space. I felt suffocated. I felt like I couldn't breathe. So I told the kids that I was going away for a couple of days. And the way I explained it was I said, you know how sometimes when something's not working for you and you're really angry and I tell you that you need to calm down because you can't solve problems when you're angry? Well, this is a big problem. <laughs> so I need two days to calm down. I decided that this vlog that this vlog is about doing difficult things and how important it is to do difficult things because children learn from watching us and if they see us do difficult things and they see us struggle and get knocked down pick ourselves back up again. If they see us doing it, then it becomes real. And if they watch us pick ourselves up and keep fighting, then they learn that they can pick themselves up and keep fighting. So I'm open with my kids about when I'm struggling and about why I'm struggling and about how I get strong again so that I can keep fighting. The situation is this. My marriage was very unhealthy for me. For many complicated reasons that I don't need to share here. And I have had an entire lifetime of poor health, poor physical health and poor mental health. So for a while, I tolerated the unhealthy marriage. I made the best of an unhealthy marriage. I pushed through, picked myself up. I kept fighting because I was used to doing that. But it came to a point where I realized that my physical health and my mental health would be an awful lot better <laughs> if I wasn't living in an unhealthy situation. And that was when the opportunity came up to go to Africa. So I jumped on it and I went. And having that room to breathe really solidified in my mind that I needed a different situation. I don't need anything complicated. I don't need a big house. I don't need lots of stuff. I actually prefer simplicity. Plumbing, you know, sure. <laughs> electricity, yeah, yeah, I do kind of like having electricity. But I don't need so much complication. I don't need so many toys. I don't need so, I don't need so many things. I need a simple life. And so that's what I decided I wanted 
when I came back to Canada, I decided I would get a truck, I would get a camper, and we would go exploring. And we would just have a simple life. Have less stuff and more space. And yeah, the camper isn't more space. I mean the world, the whole country being our space. That's what my heart told me I needed. So the girl's father agreed to buy me out of the house. And the plan was to use that money to go adventuring, to be free. To have the whole country be my space. And I really liked that plan and the girls really liked that plan. So I spent all my savings buying the truck and buying the camper. I was very careful buying the truck. I knew it needed to be strong and needed to be reliable. So I did my research and I got a really good truck. I was less careful when I came to the camper. I knew there was a shortage of campers and that a lot of people were buying campers and there was gonna be a lot of competition. So I really rushed into that purchase. I just really wanted it to be the right camper for me. So I bought it without looking deeply, without really challenging the purchase because I really wanted it to be my camper. The first time that I, after it was delivered to my property, the first time that I unlocked the door, the lock crumbled in my hands and it just went downhill from the air. Uh, there's a bit of work to do with the camper, getting it clean, getting it renovated, and getting it redecorated. Um, and I'm gonna get started today. And of course, since yesterday was the first day of summer, today is absolutely freezing. But hopefully when the sun gets going, it'll warm up a bit. So, let's get moving. Was it all just a dream, just all I replaced this lock when I first bought it. Yeah, do you see all this water damage back here? water damage that right there that's water damage see look at the color of the wood do you see the color of the wood here mm -hmm. yeah it's nice and light brown yeah and flat do you see how flat it is uh -huh. now what about this wood over here oh, it's not flat no it's not flat and is it the same color no no it's a dark color those are water stains so there must have been a leak over here and it got in the wall and it got in the wood. And because they use cheap, lightweight wood to build these things, it just falls apart. Yeah. So this is gonna fall apart? Well, it is falling apart, yeah. But hopefully we can, you know, we can take care of it really well. And maybe we can even make it better. So that it's not falling apart. What do you think, can we do that? <laughs> I Tell me, did it. you know that you would be leaving me just like the winners? Tell me, I'm being honest. Tell me, should I know? Girls, it's hailing! She's on the track. I did it yesterday. I did not film it because I had 700 things I was thinking about, and this camera was not one of them. I will try to film it at some point. Um, but she's on. So we are home from our inaugural test run with the camper on the truck. We were gone for 12 days. Six of those days we were farm sitting, so we were sleeping in the farmhouse while I finished up some of the um, decor finishing touches inside. And then um, for the other half we were living in the camper full time and cooking in the camper and that whole deal. And I gotta tell you, I am really glad that we did this because there are so many things wrong with the camper. There are so many problems. There were so many obstacles. And I know, especially having a used camper, but even with a new camper, there are always glitches. There are always things falling apart. So I am prepared for that. 
but I wasn't quite prepared for just how many things were gonna go wrong. So, let me walk you through them. For starters, I lost the cover to the bathroom vent. It flew off while we were driving. I didn't see it. Some lady pulled over and told us about it later. So I'm gonna have to cover that up so that it doesn't get rain inside the camper. I still cannot get my hot water heater to work. There's a little teeny bit of corrosion inside this hole and I can't get the anode rod inside of it. Not far enough to hold the water at least. At the very least it would be nice to have a latch that works. <laughs> My fridge was giving me troubles and part way through the trip the fridge stopped working altogether and my food all went bad. Broken awning holder. I'm not surprised that it broke because like, damn look at it. <laughs> oh and then I also noticed this the other day. That's it. That's how they hold it together. Staples. When the camper is on the truck, the end of the truck is right about here. And everything shifts badly here. You can even see there are scratch marks on the floor because this door opens and hits the floor, but right now, When I'm on the truck, the far end gets lower, and the near end gets higher, and the door goes thump, and hits right over there, you have to squeeze through this teeny tiny little space, which is fine for the kids, the kids do no problem, but for me it's a slightly bigger challenge. <laughs> and this drawer doesn't lock, so I have to figure out if there's a way to keep my butt from sagging so much when I'm on the truck. dream is over. <laughs> I took the camper to a guy who knows campers. He spent like four hours going over it with me and identifying all the problems. And the problems are many. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's structural rot here. It sags. Maybe one day it will just snap right off. You never know. There's structural rot here, that sags. Um, the floor is all rotted out. That, in addition to the furnace doesn't work, the hot water heater, I can't get the anode rot in. Um, I can't even remember now. The, miss the roof, the entire roof needs to be resealed. If I was at a different stage in my life, I would totally be up for that adventure. And I even considered potentially doing the work myself. But I'm supposed to be homeschooling two kids. <laughs> I can't spend the next eight months renovating a camper. So I am moving back into the house and putting the camper up for sale. I will be 100% honest about the problems, which means I'm gonna lose a lot of money. But maybe there will be time to buy a new camper 
and we can still take our trip. Let's see. Okay, so this morning I turned the fridge off and I took all the food out. The only thing I left in there was a water bottle because you never know when you might want a drink of water. Now, what's really interesting is this fridge has been turned off for probably 12 hours and this here bottle of water is solid ice. It is solid ice. The fridge, when turned off, becomes a freezer and freezes my water to solid ice. So... That's interesting. So I got an offer on the camper. $500, which is enough to make me almost cry. I, I'm pretty sure I could like disassemble it and sell the parts for more than that. I mean, I know, I know that I could disassemble it and sell the parts for more than that. But it's just, the ad's been up for like, almost two weeks and almost every day sometimes multiple times a day I get messages from people saying how bad is the water damage and I just answer I don't know it might not be very bad at all but I'm a single mom with two kids I'm not really in a position to fix water damage and they all say I appreciate your honesty but it sounds like too much work for me. And then that's the end of it. I don't think it's gonna sell. So I don't know, I'm toying with doing the work myself. I don't know, I don't know what to do. And it just went downhill from my ear to the point where now I know It's not usable. So, you know, I, I coped with that disappointment and I came up with a new plan. And then last week the truck broke down. coped with that <laughs> and I came up with a new plan <clears throat> and then today the truck is still broken and then yesterday after three months of him trying to get financing for the house the plan for the financing seems to have fallen through so I don't have any money I don't have a truck I don't have a camera. So that's where I am. I'm back to feeling very trapped in an unhealthy place and having no escape strategy. I don't even have a vehicle. I had to borrow my ex's vehicle to come here. So this is a vlog about doing hard things. I wanted it to be a vlog about traveling across Canada in a camper with my kids. But now, I don't know what it is. <laughs>